I went to see the biggest, stinkiest flower in the world twice. Welcome or welcome back. Today we're at the Huntington because we're checking out the world's largest flower. It only blooms for 24 hours and then it's gone. It started yesterday around 5 p.m. It peaked around midnight when nobody was here to see it. But now we're here the next day and I was told that it's actually going to be closing up again at 5. It's a little bit after 3 right now. So let's go inside and check out this flower. Friends, I was so excited to see this because I have not seen a corpse flower bloom for at least 20 years. So seeing two in such a short amount of time blooming was absolutely amazing. We're going to see Odora blooming today. She bloomed on July 22nd, 2024. And these plants are absolutely amazing because they only bloom every two to three years. That's right, every two to three years. So this plant will produce either one leaf or one flower at a time. It'll grow up to and over, as you can tell, six inches a day when it's at the flowering stage. So I was watching and making sure, trying to see if I could predict when it was going to bloom. And I based it on the first one blooming, Odora. I noticed that Odora reached 93 inches in height the day before it bloomed. So I used that to predict that Centennial would bloom July 30th. And I wound up guessing correctly. So we're going to see Centennial blooming now. Uh, she was in a different area and where there was, she was surrounded by more greenery and she seemed much happier than the other Odora, which I heard, um, what a, I overheard somebody saying that Odora had been since where she was, she was closing up actually earlier than I expected. You'll see them pointing at the fruiting stage and that's Stinkosaurus Rex, which bloomed a while ago. And that's what the fruiting stage looks like. The corpse flower, like many tropical plants, can have an unpredictable flowering time. And we're gonna just check out just what these look like now. And look at how beautiful this plant is. It really is amazing. But I loved also seeing the orchids. Which I read a fascinating book called The Orchid Thief a while ago and learned some pretty cool facts about orchids, including the fact that when they were first discovered by Europeans, the Europeans thought, hey, these orchids need to be kept in very, very warm conditions because that's what a rainforest is like. Not realizing that the understory of the rainforest is much cooler and thus the orchids actually need a cooler environment. So now we're gonna head outside and check out the gorgeous gardens of the Huntington Library and Gardens during the summer. I love the mixture of the different shades and look at the beautiful angelonia in the foreground and the rubecchia in the background. I love those cheerful yellow blooms. Just totally remind me of summertime. My mom used to grow them and they're one of my favorite flowers. Although I kind of don't like them as much because I'm kind of allergic to their little spikes. But you know, like anything. Oh, look at how beautiful this dragonfly is. Wow, I love seeing dragonflies because they are great for the garden and they actually help kill mosquitoes. Cool fact. Now we're going to check out the beautiful rose garden, which they have really done a great job of maintaining. We saw this before the latest heat wave, so I'm not sure if it's still quite as gorgeous, but they did a great job with the Alstomeria on the left and the roses on the right. I love the color blocking that they do at the Huntington. It's been really hot, so this is a shorter video, but thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more information and videos about the Huntington Library and Gardens, go ahead and click the video that shows up on your screen, and I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great day, friends, and see you later.